This is She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. Your host, Kinsey Roberts, interviews incredible women in the wedding industry who are making their mark and creating success on their terms. Join the conversation. Hello there. Welcome to episode 147 of She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. This is your host, Kinsey Roberts. I'm a wedding venue owner in Colorado, the host of this podcast, of course, and a venue and wedding professional educator. You can find me at She Creates Business on Instagram or visit me on my website, shecreatesbusinesspodcast.com. That's a long URL and somebody told me recently I should change it. (laughs) And I'm thinking about it, honestly, because they're not wrong. Um, We're going to talk about four ways you can prepare your wedding business to outsource to a VA today. But before I get there, I just want to let you know that I'd love for you to save the date. November 10th, 2019, I am releasing the 2020 She Creates Content Calendar. What is the She Creates Content Calendar? It is 365 days of done-for-you marketing content for wedding professionals only. These are wedding-specific topics, people. And there can be it can be yours. You guys, doesn't this sound like an infomercial? I'm loving it. It can be yours for $9.99. It's not $9.99. It's $127. So for less than 35 cents per day in 2020, you can have a done for you marketing piece of content telling you exactly what to write, exactly where to put it, and how to market to your couple so that you can start producing content that helps current clients validate their decision to hire you. It helps future clients find you and also validate their decision to reach out to you and more. You can use it on your blog social media, YouTube, your own podcast, doesn't matter. It's for all of you who are in the wedding industry. It's not just for venue owners, even though I am a venue owner. So get it on November 10th. Mark your calendar. It's $127. So go ahead and just set that aside in your bank account right now. So uh, yeah, guys, less than 35 cents a day next year. Come on, come on. And then when you outsource to a VA after hearing this episode, guess what? You can just put that calendar right in their hand and say, this is what I want my social media marketing to look like next year. Go forth and thank you so much. Um, But for real, Adriana McDermott is on the podcast today. She's the owner of Ava and the Bee. It's a wedding professionals virtual assistant service. And I've been wanting to bring her on the show for a while because I've had this topic on my heart. It's been near and dear to me as I have outsourced in both my venue business and in the podcast. And it's something that I think we all struggle with. A lot of times I'll hear wedding professionals say, I need to outsource, I need help. It may look like a virtual assistant for you. Maybe it's an associate in your business. Either way, I I don't think that... I don't think that we can afford it in many cases. In some cases, that is true. And if that's the case, you know, save your money. But in a lot of cases, I don't think that's true. I think what it comes down to is that we're not prepared to bring on help. We're not prepared for them to hit the ground running so that we can actually see a return on our investment sooner rather than later. Because what that person ends up doing, that virtual assistant, is just kind of like cleaning up the pieces, right? They're in there like cleaning your virtual house because it's a disaster instead of doing what you hired them to do. So instead of writing blog posts for you, instead of managing your Pinterest, they're like cleaning out your inbox because it has 30,000 emails in it because you just have let it go. And I think that there are things we can do to prepare our wedding business to outsource to a virtual assistant so that when we are ready to hire, and I know a lot of you are there, they can truly hit the ground running. You can truly see a return on your investment in them sooner rather than later. Isn't that what we all want? We want them to come into our business and say, okay, here's what you do. Here's my process. Go forth and get it done. I don't know why I keep saying go forth in this episode, you guys. It's just, it is what it is. Um, We want that, don't we? I mean, I know I do. I want to see a return on the investment. I want to see strategy being implemented. I don't need someone to come in and like sweep my virtual floor because I'm too much of a mess to take care of it myself. So we are talking about four ways you can outsource your, or excuse me, four ways you can prepare to outsource your business. And what I like about these ways is that Adriana is digging step by step into each way that you can um, prepare. So each section. So we talk about general items, general items in your business, how you can prepare to outsource, how to prepare to outsource your social media, how to prepare to outsource blogging. We should all be creating content. And in this scenario, I'm going to use blogging as a general term for creating long form content of some sort. It could be a podcast, it could be a YouTube show, it could be a blog. I don't care. Um, Either way, have some words on the internet, you guys, so it makes it easier for people to find you. 
And finally, how to prepare to outsource general admin. So anything that doesn't fall in the general tasks that are more administrative based, Adriana is walking us through step by step. She's also amazing and has provided us with a four ways to outsource guide. So you can get that uh, in the download. It's in the show notes. Get it, download it, follow along in this episode. And I hope you'll share with me how you want to outsource. And here's what I love about this. You don't have to do all four of these. You don't even have to do two of them. Just do one outsource one thing and see how it goes. Outsource your social media. I outsource just my Pinterest in at She Creates Business and I can't wait to see how it goes. Um, full disclosure, I have a virtual assistant company. It is not Ava and the Bee. Um, it is a different company. I have talked to Adriana about outsourcing to her. We haven't uh, solidified that yet, but um, I wanted you guys to know that. I do have an outsource, a VA company who's working for me for Vistaview Events and the Pinterest management portion of She Creates Business. It's not Ava and the Bee, but I highly recommend Adriana and her team. She's amazing as well. And you know, there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? There's more than one VA company out there. So find one that works for you. If you have any recommendations or you need any recommendations, find me at She Creates Business on Instagram and I'll have those for you. All right, you guys, without further ado, let's go to the show and talk to Adriana from Ava and the Bee about four ways you can prepare your business to outsource to a virtual assistant. Adriana, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure to have you here. I, as you know, from my like crazy email back to you to get you on the show, I was like, "Ah, I have all these ideas exploding in my head about hiring VAs and all of this. So I am so glad you said yes and that you're on the show today to tell us how we can prepare our business to outsource. But before we get to that, Adriana, you know, I always read your professional bio there at the top of the show, but I would love for you to tell everybody who you are and what you do in the wedding industry. Of course. So I am a virtual assistant and digital marketer for wedding professionals with my company, Ava and the Bee. Um, I've been in the industry for 10 years now. I got started in high school designing bridal accessories, then bridal worked in bridal salons. Um, The summer of my senior year, I co-opened a wedding planning bridal boutique and florist company. Um, a couple years ago, I kind of hit burnout, <laughs> um, mm. having, you know, weddings every single weekend while running a bridal boutique was a lot. So um, I went ahead and sold my shares of the company and I kind of became a virtual assistant by accident. Um, I didn't even know what the term was. I just had a lot of friends in the industry who needed someone and they needed to outsource, but they didn't want to train someone on the wedding industry. Mm. Um because there's a lot of, you know, nuances, you know, a bride wants something different than a vendor. And, you know, there's a lot of things. Yeah. So it just, it kind of fell in my lap. Um, I started piping up and working for some friends um, and and helping them with like digital marketing and blogging and Pinterest. And it kind of led to another and I saw this sneak. And next thing you know, here I am full time (laughs) working with wedding for us. That's so interesting. And I couldn't agree more. I think it's wonderful that virtual assistants have started to niche down in many industries, but also in our industry as you have, because you're so right. It's there's a lot of nuances. And, you know, being a virtual assistant for, you know, a real estate professional or any professional is so much different than the industry because we have so much various, so many various degrees of things happening our biz- in our business, like other vendors, clients, um, wholesale partnerships, or what it, whatever it looks like. So you really need somebody who knows what it actually means to like take clients through the whole engagement process until you deliver their service. Exactly. Yeah, it's definitely from you know pre marketing, you know, trying to catch their attention through the onboarding, through the after. You know, once you, if you're a photographer and you shoot a wedding, that's not really the end of your relationship with them. So it's definitely important to kind of niche down a little. That's right. Oh, so true. Well, you got started in the industry in high school. That's so impressive. You stayed with it for over a decade. How did you get, how did you like hear about the industry all those years ago? Or were you just like, did you randomly apply for a job and here you are? Or were you like, oh, I'm, I'm super interested in this? So I actually, I kind of always was interested in weddings. I've always been someone who loves, you know, design and events. And I knew I wanted to go to art school. I actually went to school for millinery. Hat making was my original focus. And then I moved on to just textiles in general. So it was just kind of landed in my lap. And then, yeah, in in college, you know, I needed a job. So I started working in bridal shops and it just grew. It just grew (laughs) from there. Oh, man, we can never I love the way life turns out, you know, we could never predict 
I always say like the pot, even the podcast, I went to journalism school, but podcasting was not popular back in 2006. <laughs> so I, but I could have never predicted that this is where it would lead. And for you, I'm sure when you started in those bridal shops back in college, you weren't thinking like, I will take this as a career and be an entrepreneur. Yeah, definitely was not what I was thinking. <laughs> um, but I'm so glad that it that I did that. Me too. That's really impressive. I like this. Okay. So I cannot think of a better person to come on here and talk to us about preparing our business to outsource. So background story, you guys, Adriana and I, this is what I was mentioning earlier. So we hopped on email. We talked about ways we could partner on an episode. And I told her, you know, for myself and uh, for you guys listening, I know that we're all at like various stages of our business, but I feel like the caliber of my listeners, like they know what a virtual assistant is. We can all agree we know what a virtual assistant is. We have a general idea of what we can outsource. And I think the thing for me and, you know, when I talk to other pros in the industry, what actually holds us back is not that we don't understand what a VA is or what they do, but what actually holds us back is that we don't know how to prepare our business to hand over to a virtual assistant so that they can literally hit the ground running and start impacting our business right away. We feel like, I'm sure you've said this phrase, we've all said it, my back end is a mess. The back end of my business is a mess, right? We've all been there. Maybe you're there. I'm raising two hands. I, Adriana knows this personally because I'm actually looking at hiring her to do some work for me. So I I, just, I feel the same way. And I was like, listen, we need to like get down to the brass tacks and let's talk about what we actually need to do to prepare our business to hire a virtual assistant. So we can say, hi, Adriana or whomever. Here's what I would like you to do. Here's my stuff. Let me know if you need anything. Go forth. Um, and you know, it's more complicated than that, obviously. And we go back to all those nuances we were just talking about. But in general, I think that this is the step that really holds us back. And so we're going to unpack this for you today. And by we, I mean, Adriana, because she's the pro and uh, hopefully get you to that next step. So you can start outsourcing things that are really going to be impactful for your business. So we're talking about four things today, Adriana. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, and the first one that we are, and by, I keep saying we, I mean Adriana, you guys, <laughs> because I have no idea. Uh, we're going to talk about general items you can do in your business to prepare to bring on your virtual assistant. But before we get to that one, Adriana, is there anything you want to tell us to just kind of tee us up for this whole conversation today? Yeah, so I'm going to kind of walk you through how to generally prep your business. And then I'll go through some individuals like social media, blogging and admin, since mm -hmm. I know that those are some top ones. So I have some kind of tips for overall, and then I'll get a little bit more strategic. <laughs> I like that. Oh, I like that. Well, let's dig into the overall tips then. Let's start with number one. What are those general things we can begin to do in our business to prepare for someone like you? Perfect. So the definitely the first step is to really think about what you need to outsource. Most of the um, emails I get go like this. Hi, I need help. <laughs> and there's nothing else. <laughs> so you kind of need to give a little bit more. So I like to ask my clients the following three questions. Number one, what is not getting done in your business that needs to get done? Like what are priority items? Two, what are you not good at or is just outside of your zone of genius that needs to be done? And then three, what types of tasks? You know, are they blogging? Are they Pinterest? Is it website? Is it email management? Um, before you start kind of finding a virtual assistant, you really have to think about what exactly you're looking to outsource because there really are a lot of things. So if you can go into the conversation with a potential VA with at least a general idea, it's going to help both parties tremendously than just emailing be like, I need help help me. <laughs> yeah, help me do something. Well, and yes. we can use even when you have, you know, when someone shares a little specific information with you, we can use myself as a personal example. That's totally fine. Since we are literally in this conversation right now. Um, I, I feel like I was kind of specific, but I was also kind of all over the place. And so how do you when someone like me emails you and so I'll tell you guys, I emailed Adriana and I said, Listen, <laughs> I feel like I'm just preparing to prepare to prepare. And I have like a list of blog topic ideas that I know that I need to create content, but I don't do anything. Uh, and so when someone emails you like that, how do you kind of unpack that for them to then determine what 
will truly impact their business. Like, let's use mine for exa- for an example. Um, I think you really said, I, for me, it seemed like you were really pointing me towards Pinterest, in addition to other things that I need. But uh, how do you kind of help, try to help unpack a person's business and say, hey, let's start here? Yeah, so I think a lot of it comes down to when I get an, an inquiry like that, as I really try to look at their business. I take time to look at their website, mm-hmm. their social media, their overall presence, and I kind of can see, okay, where are the gaps or where are they going to be getting the most clients? So because I have wedding, you know, background, I do know kind of a little bit more detailed of where clients are coming from and leads. So for me, I try to kind of see what all they are needing help with and what are going to be the most beneficial financially. So, you know, if maybe they want 15 things, but only three of these are really needed right now, like blogging or Pinterest, since they go together, then I'll kind of be like, okay, like, how about we kind of focus on this first? And then we can kind of, you know, strategize the rest down the road. Um, I think it's a little bit easier if you're able to kind of put blinders on it and focus on a few things that are really going to make the biggest impact right away. So I try to kind of take a step back and see, okay, what does that client really need? Like, have they not blogged in six months? They probably need that a little bit more than they might need something else. Mm hmm. So that's something that we can do for ourselves when you know, you mentioned in number one with the for the general items we can do to prepare when we're really asking ourselves what needs to be done that's not getting done. The tertiary question is what is really impactful to your business? What actually drives revenue? And is there some step in that process that is not getting done that needs to get done because that could be on your list to outsource? Exactly. I think Mm -hmm. it is, like you said, it's important to kind of focus on what are going to be the money makers for you first, you know, because there are a lot of great things you can outsource, but I think it's important to focus at least at first on what are going to get you leads or clients. Okay. That makes sense. What else in number one in that general category? Is there anything that we didn't touch on? Um, Asking ourselves those three questions you mentioned, what else should we do? Um, Another thing is to also start keeping in mind what software and applications you use that your VA might also need to use. Um, It's really important, especially if we're doing things like maybe more workflow to kind of know what programs you use. Do you use Owlplanner and HoneyBook? Do you use Pile Behind Your HoneyBook and 17 Hats? You know, like there's such a repertoire of what you can use. Mm -hmm. So I think um, beforehand to also kind of think of what do I use every day that my VA might have to use? Um, because that way, you know, when you reach out and you can say, okay, I have Pinterest, but I don't have tailwind that way they know, okay, we're going to have to, you know, help you with that. Or if you want blogging, but you don't have a blog set up, that's kind of important for us to know because that's, you know, a whole nother thing we have to do for you. Mm, Oh, that's a good point. If you're saying I want to start a blog, but you've set up a website that doesn't currently have a blog. Step number one is not starting to write blogs and creating images that can be pinned. Step number one is adding a blog to your website. Yes, uh, which happens, you know, or mm-hmm, they totally. they have a template that has a blog, but they haven't set it up yet. So kind of thinking about what you're using and to also really be ready to have clear and concise instructions. It's totally okay to, you know, hire someone in, you know, your back end's a mess. That's, you know, pretty normal. But you just have to make sure you're kind of specific in what you're requesting and explain the task thoroughly and why it's important to your business, you know. Sometimes I see, especially with blogging, is they'll just send a wedding and be like, I like this wedding. Well, that's not really telling me, is it your ideal client? Is it your favorite venue? Who is the client? You know, you kind of need to make sure that there's not a ton of room for assumption um, or you'll get a million questions (laughs) in return. But to always make sure, you know, whenever you're assigning tasks to give as much info as you have on it. Okay. And so when you are when you're explaining tasks, like for instance, if you send a bunch of photos and just say, I like this wedding, obviously that's not helpful. Um, What are some ways there, what are some good communication styles you've seen from your clients that just help you really like take that task and run with it? Yeah. So it kind of depends on exactly how the back end of the VA company is set up. So I can, um, I'll go into blogging next since that kind of leads into Mm, the blogging. So in terms of organization, some um, I definitely love things like Google Drive that are going to be just an open book for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, Google Drive and Dropbox are probably the two biggest that we use. So if you already have something like that set up, you can even just start putting files in, even if you haven't hired a VA. Maybe you're like, okay, I'm going to have someone do my Instagram. 
start a folder, start putting stuff in there, which I'll go over a little bit more detail um, later as well, but kind of start maybe putting stuff out there. So that way you're not so stressed as soon as you find someone, you're not like scrambling the night before you're like, okay, I already have quite a bit ready to go. Okay. So like, what are some examples of folders we could set up in our Google drive? So I'll go through, um, I'm looking at, let's see, let's do blogging. Let me go through blogging and then that'll answer some of those Mm, for you. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah, let's move on to blogging. So the first step is for blogging. So let's say you're ready to outsource is to start thinking about how often you want to blog because Mm -hmm. that will obviously determine how many per month. Um, I do suggest at least once a week. If you only do like one or two a month, it's not necessarily going to help with an overall marketing strategy. It's, It's not just about you know, blogging is about SEO, showing potential work, backlinks. So, you know, kind of make sure you're a little bit consistent and you're at that stage of your business where you have at least something to talk about once a week. Okay. Um, I also recommend pairing with some kind of social media. Um, if that's something you do want to outsource, especially like Pinterest, Facebook, or Instagram, you know, posting a blog a week doesn't get attention unless you share it. (laughs) No one's really going to know that you posted it. So, kind of good to combine those sometimes with packages is, you know, you might want to do blogging, but you're like, I don't want to post that to Facebook. We'll see if your VA can include that as, you know, I post it and then I cross post. Um, and then in terms of when you're starting to look at packages for blogging, always make sure to see what the package includes. So how many words does it include? Does it include SEO, like keyword research and alt tags? Um, are they culling the images for you or is that something you need to do prior? What platforms do they blog on? You know, do they have experience in your industry? Kind of do a little homework just to make sure you find the one that's going to fit with you exactly. Since there's, you know, so many different types in the world, it's kind of get to kind of see, you know, what other packages going to include for you? Is there anything that you need that isn't included? So this is Mm -hmm. where I get to more organizational. So once you've found the right VA, it's time to start thinking about what you're going to be blogging. So I recommend to, you know, kind of go through your your library and think, okay, let's say maybe I'm trying to catch up from spring wedding season or I have a backlog of 15 weddings that just have not been touched. (laughs) Start to make a list um, and start to organize the images. Now, every company, like I said, will have a different, but a lot of us will have collaborative programs so you can start sharing. So I know for us, we use Google Docs and we have a spreadsheet. So in the spreadsheet, the client can input, you know, couple name, you know, list of vendors, link to the images and additional information that we might need. Another way you could do it is, so for your Google Doc, maybe within your blogging folder, you'll have each wedding will have its own folder. And then in that folder, you're going to want to include, you know, the images that you want used if you've already culled them down, as well as vendor and couple information. So this one's really key for weddings. Right. Um, we need to make sure we have info on the shoot <laughs> or we can't write anything. Um, so, you know, whenever you're starting to, let's say you haven't hired someone, but you're thinking about it, you know, take some time to go through the weddings or the events that you want published. And start even just keeping it, like I said, in a Google folder that's this exact style shoot or this wedding and just throw everything in there. (laughs) Um, You know, it's it's better for us as a VA to have too much info than not enough. Mm, So true. So, you know, if you and another option, one of the reasons we use Google, a spreadsheet is because we do the calling for you. So they just send us the link to the Pixie set or whatever sharing platform. And then we do that. But if you're already calling the images, then you can just put a folder in there and just throw in like a PDF of here's the vendors, you know, here's info on the client. And we definitely, you know, some of the things we want to know is who is the couple, (laughs) where the event was, maybe even special moments that you just remember that you're like, oh, they did this special thing at the end. Um, Or if it's a styled shoot, you know, you can just start typing on a document, you know, what the sheet was, what was the inspiration. Um, If there's any info questionnaires, a lot of photographers will have, you know, getting to know you questionnaire. I just have them attach that. They don't even have to retype it. Just attach it and I'll go through and find the info. So you'll use that info then to create part of the content of their blog post. 
Exactly. Oh, and so easy for them. Yep. So for us, we definitely, you know, as much info as you have on the couple, the better or the mm-hmm. sound shoot or the, you know, whatever topic it is. Um, that way we also make sure we cover anything that is important or might make it stand out. Mm -hmm. You know, and as you're talking about this, this is just such a, you know, I'm thinking of the way I save our photos for the wedding, for my wedding venue. And it would, I save all of, all of the information you're asking about. It would be so easy for me to go get because I save all of it anyway, of course, because I'm always posting pictures on Instagram. I'm always crediting vendors. And so I have all of this and it's just not in one folder in Google Drive, but it would be so easy for me to just have like a slight change change in my habit to then start putting this together in a Google Drive so that when I hire you, it's boom, it's just right there. Like it's just truly, Mm -hmm. it's stuff we're saving already anyway, as wedding vendors, because we're already kind of posting, maybe not consistently, but um, I'm just, I'm saving it in like a few places right now. Like all of my vendors and links and their Instagram handles are on like a notes file on my, on my (laughs) phone, (laughs) Um, like in on my Apple phone. And then uh, all of our wedding photos, I'm looking at it right now. It is a folder on my desktop called VVE wedding photos. But if I could just put, you know what I mean? But they're all kind of like sprawled out. If I would just change my habits and start changing and start saving them in one place for each wedding, um, you know, how easy would that be for someone like you to come pick that up? Exactly. And that's Mm. great for, you know, anyone on your team that might need access as well. Totally. You know, you can just have a folder that says, you know, 2019 wedding every and then just have a folder in there with 10 different folders of all 10 weddings. And that way, you know, like you said, if if it's an upcoming wedding, you can just create it now and then start throwing stuff in as you get it for it. I love that. Okay, so the steps here, you guys, uh, Adriana has been sharing is use Google Drive or Dropbox, whatever you feel more comfortable with. Google Drive is free. Um, create a folder for each wedding. Put the pictures in there cold or not. If they're not cold, you'll need to hire someone who will do that for you. But put the photos in there or a link to it. Put a PDF or even just a Google Doc of this wedding's information. File away the questionnaire that you get from your clients in that same folder. Make that your habit. When you're ready to outsource to a VA, you can just share that Google Drive. Yep. And it's super, it's so easy because like you said, you just share it and it's all there. And it's done for you. It's so we easy. just we just start. <laughs> wow. What else about blogging? What about what else about preparing to outsource our blogging? Or have we missed anything? So we covered pretty much everything. Okay. Um, like I said, another thing I like to think of is once you start um, working with a VA, whenever mm-hmm. you're doing these weddings, if you're a vendor that's at the wedding, if you're kind of because sometimes you run into that where, oh, I don't, I don't have anything to say. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about this couple. If you're there at the event, have even if your assistant take notes of like a few cute moments. So it's just something, again, you can type up super quick, throw it in the thing that says, okay, she, they had this. Because I know from being a wedding planner how hard it is to remember certain things after the wedding. <laughs> you know, during the totally. wedding, you're on like autopilot and you don't notice that. So even having like your assistant just be like, can you jot down three special moments for this wedding? So that way, when it's time to blog it, you're like, oh, I don't have to remember those three moments. They're already there. Yes, I like that. That's a great idea. And that's really good for venues too, I feel like. You know, Mm -hmm. photographers and planners, you are so involved with the couple. And we feel that way too at our venue. I think that's just a particular way that we run our business. But also, there are some clients that we're not as close with. You know, we maybe we haven't seen, especially if they hired a full planner, and particularly if maybe we haven't worked with that full planner yet, we're not as close to the client and we truly don't really see them till the wedding day. And so we wouldn't have as much to offer in. The, in terms of content. So that's a really good idea to keep notes like during the event, you know, with marketing in mind. Mm-hmm. Just Smart. so you remember. Okay, I like this. Okay, so should we move on to social media then? Yes, we okay. can move on. Okay. How should we prep our social media to outsource? Oh, really quickly, actually, let's back up to blogging. Yes. I just have a question. And I know this will be different depending on who we outsource to and which VA we hire. But do we need to typically or, you know, use your business as an example. If we outsource to you for blogging, like, do we have to create our own Pinterest images and stuff? Or how does that work? How do you do that? So it depends on kind of what package you'll book. So yeah. with us, it would be technically a separate package because we would be doing your whole Pinterest. So we're going to be doing all that for you anyway. Oh, okay. So 
But let's say you have someone already doing Pinterest or it's under control, then I would recommend asking the the VA, do you offer maybe graphic pins or picking the top pin images and see if that's something that they can add or offer for you. Okay, so you'll have to ask if they can add that pin. Do you guys actually post the blog post? Like, do you get it? Do you get into Squarespace or their blogging platform and put it in there and set it up and schedule it out? Yep. So we include all of that. So like I said, it will vary, but I know a lot of them, you know, we will require. So some things we would require login information would be the back end of your website or Squarespace. Um, And you can use something like Dashlane if you're not comfortable with sharing a password, Dashlane or LastPass or, you know, password sharing services. Uh, Most of our clients are fine with it since we're just on there just to do that, you know. But yeah, we can definitely schedule it. We can get it out there ready to go. So you don't even have to think about it. You just have to take a look, say, yep, that looks great. And it goes out. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Sorry. Just had to get that in there. Um, I know it's, uh, it kind of goes hand in hand with blogging really. So let's talk about social media. What are our first steps to prep our socials? All right. Perfect. So the first step is similar to blogging is to think about how often you want to post. So a lot of packages will be three to five times a week. You know, some will be more depending. And then Facebook is usually one to two times. Um, So kind of look and see what package offers that you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. And similar to blogging, you can start gathering images before. You don't necessarily have to wait (laughs) until you officially book someone. And this is another place where, again, a place like Google Drive or Dropbox is going to be your best friend. (laughs) Um, You can start putting images to folders. So for our clients, we like to have them sectioned off by type. So we'll do one Google, so we'll have a Google Drive, it'll be, you know, so-and-so's Instagram. And then within that folder, we'll have one for styled shoots, one for real weddings, one for headshots, so feature Fridays, behind the scenes, team members. And then we also sometimes like to have, if there's any stock images you use, you know, some other vendors who maybe aren't photographers might have more basic images they use, kind of as filler. Absolutely. So definitely the more organized the better. Um, I know with one client we work with, she's a bridal gown designer. So we have it broken down even further by collection and then by dress. So you can kind of, you know, break down your organization as deep as you want to go. But even just having kind of the basic topics you share. So, you know, child students, real weddings, whatever topics you're constantly talking about Mm -hmm. to kind of have a folder for each of them. And then you can start, you know, putting in images, you can start kind of gathering. And also, Start thinking about, you know, if there's vendors that have to go with them. So maybe, you know, you're going to be published or something and you want to share it. Well, make sure you have in that folder a vendor list. Uh, If you have Instagram handles, that's usually better. But if you don't, we can research that for you. But if you already, you know, like you said, you have a note on your phone. Mm -hmm. You can just, you know, copy and paste it and put it in that. That way we know, okay, these are the ones to credit. Because we do want to make sure when we're doing social media, crediting is obviously really huge. So the last thing we want is to forget to tag someone because it wasn't listed. So kind of the same idea as blogging is creating a folder for each kind of topic or, you know, thing you want to share. And then just making sure we have who to credit so we don't miss anybody. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And if you're the kind of person who you have thousands of pictures and you don't know what to pick, I would maybe put the top 10 to 15 per shoot or t- like styled shoot or wedding, you don't necessarily need to drop all 500 images. That's kind of a lot. You sure. need just make your top 10 or That's 15. That's overwhelming. And then, yeah. And that way we can kind of, you're going to be overwhelmed too. So just, you know, let's say you start sharing, you know, images, just kind of maybe have your top 10 or 15 per folder. So you, there's not 500 we, <laughs> we have to go through. Yeah. That's just, you know, easier for both of us. Yeah. Do you find that most people you work with want to write their own captions or do you do that? And if you do that, how does that work logistically? Like how do you match up the caption with the photo? Since I mean, there's this is really great organization for the photos, but how do you do that with when it comes to captions as well? Yeah, so we do do captions um, for a lot of our clients. We've noticed a lot of our clients prefer us to do like three or four a week and then they do like feature Fridays or more personal ones because that's something that 
we're not necessarily going to know about them. Mm -hmm. So typically we'll outline what days are going to be their days to post. But when we're doing the caption, so how we work is we lay out a feed first. So based off of our content calendar, which we make with our client, we go, okay, so this month we're focusing on this, this and this. We'll kind of lay out the feed based off of what's going up on the blog, what's going up. And then we write the captions after we lay out the feed. Um, because visually we want to make sure it's, you know, super cohesive for our client. Sure. So that, you know, means sometimes you got to, you know, move little squares around. <laughs> but in terms of creating the caption, when it comes to blogs, we definitely do call to actions, you know, talk about the blog. And then for us, it's really just a deep dive to learn their voice. We spend a lot of time reading what you post. Okay. <laughs> and so we just kind of spend a lot of time getting to know what you're posting. We do have... Um, an onboarding questionnaire. So this is going to help us discover your brand voice, your ideal client, who you're targeting, your messaging. So we use that questionnaire to start creating captions that are going to be based off of it. So we like to do kind of the top five topics that you cover. So, you know, if you're a wedding photographer, maybe it's, you know, real brides, styled shoots, behind the scenes, you as a person, and then maybe your dog, if that's a huge part of your brand. So when we're creating captions, we always try to make sure our captions align with those top ideal topics that you want to talk about. Okay. All right. That makes total sense. I like, I like hearing you say, because I didn't know this was a possibility, but it makes total sense. I like hearing that there are some variation in packages. Like maybe you guys are posting three days a week, you know, Monday through Wednesday or Monday through Thursday, four days a week, but then they're doing Fridays because of course, maybe they like to do those personal posts on Fridays that they know the most about. And then of course they're on site at the wedding on mm -hmm. over the weekend, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So they should be in control of like stories and feedback and all of that that just really makes exactly a lot of sense. Mm. that's how we do for a lot of our clients because like you said with the wedding industry the weekend is when you're on yeah. so it should be a little bit more you know in the moment so we'll either if we're using a service like Planoly, they'll either give us the headshot or the picture they want and we just lay it out for them or we'll just leave like a, a blank spot that says you know insert your picture here <laughs> So they know, okay, this is my day. This is when I'm in charge of it. Oh, you'll insert that into Planoly so they can look at the grid <laughs> and see those parts. Yep. So oh we'll have gosh, like a, so that smart. blank square. So it's yeah. like, so that way they know, okay, you know, I, like you said, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm in charge of, you know, stories and maybe posting an in the moment picture. Okay. And when they look at their grid and see that it's blank, that's a, yet another reminder that it's their job to fill that up. Yep. Oh, kind of helps keep them on, keeps them accountable too. Yes. Which, you know, I feel, and I'm, I'm, maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but I feel like that's one of the things that I need. It's just like another human being to hold me <laughs> accountable. Who's, who's counting on me like, Hey, we've got your back three to four days a week, but then you need to come through. Um, exactly. And I feel like even just having that could be, make a huge difference in my business. And, you know, maybe, maybe you guys feel that way too. I don't know. Maybe you're nodding your head along with me. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's great to be able to have someone to be like, hey, it's your turn. That's what right. are you going to talk about? <laughs> That's right. What you still want it to sound like you. You do. You want it to sound like you. And I wonder if that, do you hear that a lot? Is that a fear that people have when they start to outsource this stuff? Yes. So one of the biggest fears, especially within our industry, is voice. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of blogging and Instagram, so I definitely, you know, your first month or so outsourcing is going to be a little bit more hands-on for you. Just naturally, you're going to need to give advice. You're going to have to be like, hey, this sounds more like me or, hey, can we switch this? But one of the best parts about outsourcing is as you grow with your VA, they're going to become so much more comfortable that soon it's going to be like way more autopilot. But just to be aware that, you know, those first few months, there will be a little bit more hand-holding for both of us just because, you know, we want to learn your brand. You want to teach your brand. You know, uh, that's a good aware. point. Yeah, just be prepared for that. And, you know, after that, then you have more of a, you'll have more of like a, a, you'll, well, your communication will be set in. First of all, part of it is just learning, like, how, how will I communicate with my VA? You know, what's exactly. easiest for us? Does email work better? Is it Slack? What is it? Um, and then, you know, that's just one piece of the puzzle. So I'm glad you said that. That really makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I recommend, you know, it's, 
if you're like in the busiest season of your life and the next 30 days are going to be chaos, maybe wait 30 days because it's not fair to you to try to, you know, outsource and take care of your business. Maybe wait the 30 days and be like, okay, next month is my, <laughs> yes. my breath of fresh air month. Well, and you feel so much, you can start to, you feel so much more prepared for what you need to do to help. It's not fair to you because you're crazy busy. And it's also not fair, though, to the your VA because they're try they want to help you. They want to get started on the right foot just as much as you do, but they can only do so much without having what they need from you. Exactly. Mm. What else about social media should we do to prepare? Does that wrap us up there? So I have one more tip. Cool. So this kind of similar to blogging is to start. So when it comes to especially like so social media and blogging kind of go in hand because it's content. So when you're starting yeah. to think about, you know, content for the next few months, start to really think about what do you have coming up? Are there client anniversaries you want posted? Are there any events you're going to be at that you're going to want to share? Uh, when you start with your VA, it's always great to share things like that. So that way we know, okay, hey, in a few weeks, she's going to be at this event. This is a huge deal. Like, let's make sure that we really touch on that. Because if we don't know, and then you're at the event and you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I forgot to tell you I'm here. Like it doesn't help as much as, you know, if you're able to give us at least a little heads up of, you know, what you have coming up. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing with us is, like I said, if we're posting three times a week, that allows them to post like a client anniversary because that way they can add that. So just whenever you're thinking about outsourcing that to start thinking about who is coming up, what's coming up that you might want us to start sharing now. Okay, so looking ahead on our own calendars, it's sort of like when I um, when my kid goes back to school, I look at their calendar for the year and mark mm -hmm. off like all of their holidays, all of their days off of school, <laughs> you know, anything I can mark off to already plug it in so that it's there. It feels that way. My kid just went back to school, you guys. So that's why I'm on that topic. Um, yeah. That makes total <laughs> sense. Well, and it's such a good start because especially anniversary posts and things of that nature, so easy just to grab those photos. So your your VA can just start with something right away. It might give you a little bit of a buffer to, you know, continue to organize your folders and, you know, give the VA what they need. Exactly. And, you know, kind of helps us see what you have that you might want to talk about. Like, if you're going to be on vacation and out of office, well, then we might want to share that on social. Just say, hey, out of the office this week, just little stuff like that, that yeah. we can just kind of put in there for you. Mm, I like that. That's a good last tip. Okay, so we're moving on to outsourcing general admin tasks. And yeah. this one's interesting to me. They're all interesting, but this one especially because there's such a variety of things that we could outsource. So I think you'll probably touch on how we can decide. Well, and you talked about it at the beginning, like what's the most important, but give us, uh, give us your best tips here and maybe some examples of what people are outsourcing and how it impacts their business. Yeah, I love this. So definitely what I mentioned before is kind of think about what exactly are you looking to outsource? This, this is, can be, I know, a little bit harder if it's not clear and dry, like social media. You know, it's like, yeah. hmm, what else can I do? So I, I recommend to really take a look at your business and see what are the three biggest tasks that are in your way. And I really encourage you to try to really only think of a few because obviously you can write down a novel. But you know, thinking about those top things that are just really going to just make you feel so much better. Those are the things we probably want to tackle with you first. So because every little thing, you know, you need to outsource will require some work on your end, whether it's organizing files, onboarding documents, things like that. That's why it's sometimes better to only tackle a few things at a time, because that way it's less overwhelming for you as well. Because maybe you have a lot of weddings coming up and, you know, you're a cake artist and you're like, I don't have time to think about 17 things. Well, then let's just focus on three. <laughs> um, and that's um, where I would definitely start organizing things in a Google Drive. So mm -hmm. even if it's just a list of here's all of the software that I use that my VA is going to need to know. Here's the login information for all of that. And here's what they're going to need to know about it. Um, that way you already have it kind of laid out. So when you onboard each other. <laughs> when you guys start working together, you're like, all right, here's my Google Drive. I already have a folder that's for you. And it has the things that you're going to need. And if you're a little confused, don't worry, ask your VA, we'll be able to walk you through it. We can even create the Google Drive for you. Like we always create our Google Drive for clients. So that way, when they come on with us, it's just there. <laughs> it's oh, just sorry. ready to go. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you already have something. And like I mentioned, you know, maybe setting up some kind of password service like Dashlane. If you are 
um, going to need someone to do more email or one-on-one client, you might want to create them a personalized email just so it's coming. It, it, that's if you don't necessarily want your VA in your inbox. So one of the general tasks I see a lot is, you know, just communicating with clients or vendors, especially for planners. They kind of need someone in their inbox, but sometimes they don't want them to actually really be in their inbox. So you can create them kind of their own email. Mm-hmm. So that way they have something to log into. Um, I like that. And if they're communicating with your clients, instead of seeing like Kinsey Roberts at gmail.com, they see Kinsey yep. at your business name.com. It feels professional. It feels like they're part of the team from their perspective, but also from your client's perspective. So there's a there's an element of professionalism there as well. Exactly. We definitely request that for certain things we do because like you said, it just, it's more professional and mm-hmm. no one's like, who's that person? Who's exactly. Ava and Navi? It's yeah, like, that? no, like it's, it's us and we're just part of your company and your clients and the wiser. Mm-hmm. So another tip to think about is that you might need more than one virtual assistant. So I think sometimes people think that you might be able to find one that does everything. And if you can, like that's super awesome. And I want to know that person, but you might need multiple people. So Let's say you really need someone that does a lot of, you know, newsletter, but the main VA you love doesn't quite do that. Then it's okay to have multiple. I think some people are scared to have multiple VAs, but I know for me, I know I have a client where I do album design and another girl who's a friend of mine does her YouTube video editing. Very different tasks, but that's totally fine because, you know, she knows that she needs two different expertise. So you can start even thinking about maybe you need two different people if one person can't do it all. Yes, yes, you know that I'm into this. Because like, for instance, my I have a wedding podcast, but I also have a wedding venue, but they require two totally different things because podcast episodes are just not the same as blogging a wedding. Exactly. Mm. So while like there's some be- and there's definitely VAs who do a lot of things, sure. and that's wonderful, just keep in mind that you might need more than one, like just depending on exactly what you need done. It might be something where maybe you need two. You need one that does the side of your business and the other one who focuses on this side. And that's totally fine. And I've had a few clients be like, is it weird if I tell you I have another VA? And I'm like, no, (laughs) I think most of my clients probably have more than one. That's fine. (laughs) That makes a lot of sense. Well, and it's like, you know, maybe your specialty, like you mentioned, going off of your example, if you're a wedding professional and you take your YouTube channel extremely seriously, you're doing two videos a week and you really need somebody who is a great video editor, that's all well and good, but that may not be, you know, there's other virtual assistants who have a lot of other quality skills, but video editing may not be one of them. Them. And so you have one VA that just does your video editing, but then your, you know, quote, main VA can take that video, they can blog it, they know how to post it to Facebook, you know what I mean? Um, exactly. But like video editing, like podcast editing, that's a, those are very specific skills. Um, and that's just one thing that you might need. So I like that. I'm thank you for saying that. That's so true. Yeah. And I think like you said, just everyone has their own skill set. So mm-hmm. it's totally fine. If you find someone who, like you said, amazing at podcasts, I know nothing about podcast editing. So I would, you know, I would not be your girl. And that's totally fine. Yeah. You'll find someone who's just so freaking good and will that's make it right. amazing. That's right. And it's not, I feel like we might be like, for me, I'll use myself as an example again, because I don't want to put words in your guys' mouth. Maybe you're like, oh, no, I can totally handle two to five VAs or whatever. Five is a lot, but you know what I mean. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, it might sound overwhelming, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if you only have two or three VAs and you and they're only doing that one task for you, well, you're only communicating about that one thing. So really the only thing that will, the only like communication is just making sure everyone is kind of on the same timeline, which is, you know, probably where batch working can really come in handy, but that's probably a whole another podcast. Oh, I love that. Yeah. But, yes. <laughs> but yeah, and you can also, you know, like you said, maybe even let us know, you know, hey, I have someone who does this part of the project, you'll be coming in at this part. So that way we know kind of where we are in succession of, of that project. So if it is a YouTube channel, we know, okay, this is our, our part of the puzzle. Mm-hmm. That's so good. What else with general admin? So when it comes to general admin, another thing I would suggest is to just kind of 
like I mentioned, having the tools ready. Mm -hmm. So maybe creating them login accounts, having the login information. I, a lot of times people will be like, Oh, I don't even know what my password is because they haven't, it's just auto Google auto puts yes. the password in every time. <laughs> and it takes them like a week to get me a password because they have to rechange it six times. So try to get some of that done maybe beforehand, just so when you're ready, you're like, okay, this is because I have had situations where they couldn't figure out their password. Absolutely. So they had a contact that went in and it just puts you us behind because now we're like, all right, we're a week behind schedule because we couldn't get in. Um, and I know with a lot of programs, we might need to have your cell phone and text you because I know certain things like MailChimp require like a text confirmation. So just be aware that when someone tries to log in, there might be some days where you have to almost be on hand to like let us in. <laughs> if it's one of those that requires, you know, a, a second form. Absolutely. Good point. Mm -hmm. Anything else we're missing in that general admin section? That's everything I have. I love it. I just wanted to add really quickly that as with hiring any independent contractor, and I'm sure you guys know this, there are definitely tax implications. And you probably should talk with your bookkeeper or CPA. Um, you know, if you pay somebody over an amount, you might need to give them a 1099, whatever that is. I don't know all of that information. I'm definitely not a tax guru. But prior to hiring someone so you're not surprised by forms that are due around the same time each year, just ask your tax professional, ask your attorney and get that all straightened out before you hire someone so you know exactly what to expect because you want this to be a long-term relationship. I think Adriana, like if, if you know if it's working out and you communicate well, you want it to be a long-term relationship because it's a slow burn and you see more results over a long-term period, I think. Yeah, exactly. I know with our clients we're very long-term in terms yeah. of I've had clients from the very beginning cuz like you said it we get to learn your company. So then we get to help you more because right. we get to see, oh, hey, we could really help you with this part of your business. And our clients are like, oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And that's not something you'd be able to say had you not had that good, you know, six, eight month relationship with them. You can really start to see how things are fitting together and make suggestions. Exactly. And oh, we feel more so comfortable because we can make suggestions because it's been a little while. So we can say, hey, let's help you with this. So good. I like that a lot. Tell this has been I have just loved the tactical nature of this episode. I took many notes for myself and for the show notes. Don't worry, you guys. But I would love for you to tell everyone where they can find you online. And again, everybody, I will put her contact information in the show notes. But tell us where they can find you online and anything else you want to add. Yeah, so you can find me online at avaandthebee.com and I am at Ava and the Bee on Instagram. And if you have any questions on onboarding, we I love to help people. You definitely do not have to work with us. There is no, you know, pressure if you DM us and say, I need help. We can definitely help find the right person for you, even if it's not us. Um, I have a huge repertoire of people that I refer out to because I know that some things are just outside of our wheelhouse. Yeah. So if you have any questions, I would love to help you find the perfect person for you. That's fantastic. Thank you for offering that. You have been amazing, Adriana. Thank you for taking the time today to share these steps with us. I feel a lot more prepared. I hope you guys do too. Adriana, thank you so much. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. It was my pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to She Creates Business. Please take a minute and head to iTunes to leave an honest review so we can help more wedding pros find the show.